light exclusion principle means we visualize the electron position as a sphere, path, cloud, none of these. Um, yeah, Pauli exclusion principle is different um, than any of these. The correct answer is D. Okay, so that's what I thought. So it just says that there's supposed to be two, no more than two per orbital. Right, Pauli exclusion says that the, no two electrons in an atom can have the same set of four quantum And then, um, Yeah, but that's, that's in two dimensions. You have to think in three dimensions. In three dimensions, 
how can you spread things four balloons as far apart as possible? Um, to spread four balloons as far apart as possible is a tetrahedral type arrangement. If you have three balloons, um, you're saying, if you have three balloons, or you, do you know what I'm talking about, the balloons? The yeah. balloons is what the book uses as an example. And so if you have three balloons, that's 120. What's a, if you have four balloons, is it 90? No. No, because you have three dimensions. You don't have two dimensions, so the three dimensions can you spread things out. You, we bring the fourth balloon from the top, which pushes these three down and makes the tetrahedral shape. That's the, the tetrahedron. So you just have to memorize the one I meant? Yeah, you memorize it. That's it. That's all there is to it. It's just memorized. And then we talked about distortions, but just work on memorizing the ideal. That's the most important. So then this would have three groups. So the, there would be one point. Ideal. That would be the ideal. This is the example we did in class. We did this molecule in, in the um, Class formaldehyde. Is what it's um, and then um, I'm I'm confident with the orbitals. Like I know how to write the electron configuration. Okay, good. But I'm not quite as confident on how to draw them. So for 42. Draw detailed orbital energy level diagram. That's just memorization also. You just memorize what it's supposed to look like. So do you know what it's supposed to look like? Yeah, I mean, you if have it's the line, the horizontal line. So for this part, so well, the, uh, the, can someone draw for me up on the board the orbital energy level diagram? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah, right. Either. Uh, how about both of you draw it and let's compare the two. Can you guys come up, Mateo and Shima? Let's see. I, I want to see because, you know, sometimes there are little things. When I ask this question on the test, I, I often see a whole bunch of uh, little variations. Uh, that red might be. We'll check the pen because some of these are yeah. toast. So uh, yeah, just draw those up there, and then we'll take a look at those. So I, I just want to see what people think. I'll be right back. I'm going to grab some more pens. Grab the black ones working on. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, anybody else want to draw a diagram, orbital energy level diagram? You know, I want it drawn a very specific way, actually. Um, <laughs> oh, 
Okay, this, uh, you know, uh, remember this diagram here. Remember this diagram except inverted. So the way this diagram is drawn is energy is going, um, increasing down, but we got to flip it so energy increases up. And so normally what we do is we put the one S at the bottom. Now, if you look at this, this is what we call um, degenerate energies here. And so you drew the 2s and the 2p at the same energy. And um, that's correct for a one electron species. The 2s and the 2p are the same energy, the 3s, the 3p, the 3d are the same energy. And we get the um, energy level diagram for something that, that would be hydrogen. And so H energy, oops, H orbital energy level diagram. I'll just spell it out. Hydrogen orbital. So the um, the energy level diagram, we want the y-axis to increase in energy. And so this would be the energy level diagram for the H atom. So it would go 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 3d, 4s, 4p, 4d, 4f. However, um, when we have more than one electron, uh, when we have more than one electron, something happens. And that is, we get splitting. So this is good. We see the splitting here occur in it. And so um, here we have no splitting. Here we have splitting. And it turns out, when we have more than one electron, the 2s and 2p are no longer the same energy. So they don't form just this uh, line that goes across. And they're no longer energetically degenerate. The 2p's, the three 2p's are energetically degenerate here. However, the, um, this, is, this is good, the energy is increasing here, but I want you to um, draw. So the first shell consists of what orbital? S the S. The second shell? P. SP. SP. Third shell? SP. SPD. Is that what we see in the periodic table? No. If we go to the third shell in the periodic table, Do we see the this D in the third shell or the third period? No. No, actually this D actually gets kicked up into the fourth period, fourth period or fourth um, shell. And so the ordering is a little bit um, uh, it should be that this D gets kicked up, this S gets kicked down here, and so the energies are um, off a little bit. And so uh, and in fact the four D occurs in the next shell. You know, because it goes 5s, 4d. And so how do you remember the order that the orbitals go in? Right, we use this. Remember this? 1s, 2s, the pyramid? 2p, 3s, 3p, 3d. This pyramid we use to determine it. And so there's a very specific way I want you to draw it, and I, I need you to draw it to the fourth shell. Up to the fourth shell. Did, you know, I, I should have... Um, so it means like for S and 3, we should be in the same level? I'm the sorry? same level? For S and 3, D? No, not the same level. For S is below energy. Reading. So, uh, do you guys have your supplement? No? If you have your supplement, can you turn to page 7 or page 8 of the supplement? Or does uh, somebody have their the supplement? I can just show what I'm talking about. Here, I, I left mine in. <laughs> 